A few hundred years ago, making it to your forties was considered a pretty solid run. In the 1700s, the average life expectancy in Europe hovered around just 35 years. Not because people aged faster, but because the world killed them first. Disease, infection, famine, war, childhood mortality was brutal. By 1900, thanks to sanitation, vaccines, and the germ theory of disease, that number started climbing. In the US, it hit 47 years. Then came antibiotics, clean water, medical imaging, heart surgery. Today, it's over 80 in many developed countries. A baby born right now is more likely than ever to see 100. And here's where it gets weird. What if 100 isn't the ceiling anymore? What if it's the starting point? We're entering an era where extending life isn't just about dodging death, it's about reprogramming it. Aging, it turns out, isn't inevitable. It's just another biological process. And like all processes, it might be hackable. We age because cells break down. DNA gets damaged. Telomeres, those protective caps on the ends of your chromosomes, shrink every time your cells divide. Eventually, cells stop replicating properly. That's when age turns from a number into a disease. But what if we could reverse that damage? Researchers are using tools like CRISPR to edit genes that control cell aging. Some have already reversed aging markers in mice. In humans, trials are beginning. AI is transforming medicine fast. Machine learning can already predict disease before symptoms show up. Robotic surgery makes operations cleaner, quicker and less invasive. Neural implants, like Elon Musk's Neuralink, aim to link your brain to the cloud, backing up memories, controlling devices, maybe even augmenting intelligence. Imagine an AI that monitors every function in your body in real time, adjusting your health like software. No more guessing games, just constant optimization. Some researchers are exploring parabiosis, transfusing young blood into older bodies to rejuvenate tissues. Others are reprogramming skin cells to become pluripotent stem cells, turning back their biological clock. At Harvard, scientists have used gene therapy to reverse aging in the optic nerves of blind mice, restoring vision. And then there's the mind-bending stuff. If your body can't be saved, what about your mind? Companies are exploring how to map the brain's entire connectomy, the full wiring diagram of who you are, and recreate it in silicon. If they succeed, you could technically live forever, as code. Still you. Or just a very good copy. That's a different kind of immortality, and a different kind of question. Let's say it works. Let's say we cure aging prevent all major diseases and maybe even digitize consciousness. Then what? Do we overpopulate the earth? Do only the rich get to live forever? Do we even want to be immortal? Or does death give life its meaning? We may be the first generation to seriously ask this question, not how long can we live, but maybe do we even need to die?